Welcome back to another innovation review. Today, we're gonna to be checking out the D3F from DYU. But before we roll the intro, I just wanna thank everybody who's taken the time out of their day to watch these videos, like those, share those, and have subscribed to the YouTube channel. And if you are new to the channel, I just wanna invite you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when we come out with new reviews. Now that that's out of the way, let's roll the intro. First, let's talk about the looks. The DYU has a very unique, very interesting vibe about it. Now there are similar bikes out there that share this sort of design, but those bikes all have what I would say is a fairly unique design. We've got this curved top tube and the battery is gonna sit in between that and the bottom bracket. Now it is a pretty distinct look. So if somebody were to see this, they would know, oh, that's a small electric bike that you're on. This is not a covert electric bike like the Baby Maker from FLX. Shout out to Rob, if you're watching this, send me the two, I'll review it. Super stoked for you guys. Anyway, back to, back to this bike. Next, let's talk about the motor. The motor we have here is a 250 watt rear hub motor. Now this is an unbranded motor, so I'm not sure who makes the actual motor inside. And from our tests, the motor paired with the controller here, it's not a very powerful e-bike. Now some people don't necessarily want that. Now me on the other side, give me two thousand watt hub motors, one in the front, one in the rear and let's just see what we can do, right? That's that's my opinion. But there are some people who want a smaller bike, doesn't go very fast, very approachable, and coming in at just about 500 bucks for the US model, this is something that is very affordable in the e-bike space and sort of hits some of those different things. As far as motor noise goes, not very loud because this, you know, it's not very powerful. So yeah, not very loud. Next, let's talk about the battery. So the battery we have here is a 36 volt, 10 amp hour, 360 watt hour battery. Now this battery is not removable, so it is gonna be here on the frame, as you can see here, and it takes about four to five hours to get a full charge on it. Now once you do have a full charge here, you should be able to get anywhere between 15 miles to 25 miles. On the website, I believe they said somewhere around 30 was sort of their estimate, but if you look at some of the popular equations we use to guesstimate range on some of these batteries, you're probably gonna get more like 15 to 25 miles and that's if you're a little bit on the smaller side when you add more weight to it you're probably gonna get a little bit less i think saying that you could get 15 miles here is pretty reasonable next let's talk about the brakes the brakes we have on the d3f are mechanical disc brakes now normally i talk about the advantages of hydraulics over mechanical but because they are trying to keep this very budget friendly and you're really not going to be going that fast this is a bike that i have no issues seeing the mechanical disc brakes here the levers up front are connected down to the calipers that grip onto those 160 millimeter discs they did a good job and i don't have any complaints about them next let's talk about the gears i guess it should be let's talk about the gear because there's only one gear here now as far as the gearing goes it is set up to be a very nice easy cadence this isn't something that's great for going up hills or for going very fast. So it fits the bike, it fits the vibe. So no real complaints about it. You're not gonna be using this bike for any of those things that I would say you shouldn't use it for. So don't use it for those things. Next, let's talk about the extras. The D3F does come with a few extras. The first one is gonna be those fenders. We've got a fender up front. We've got a fender in the rear. Excellent addition to this little bike. We've got a small bell on top, which you could remove if you know, you're not into that sort of bell stuff. We've got an integrated front light, which you can activate with the button on the right-hand side here. And the bike also comes with a brake light. Now this is not integrated. It is something that just sort of slides over the seat post. So it's not an amazing rear light, but it is nice that they added that here. So if we are riding this around at night, we do have a little bit more protection from the rear. The other extra here is gonna be those folding pedals. Now they are sort of the standard mill cheap well-go folding pedals, but it is nice if you are are trying to save a little bit of that extra space, those pedals are gonna allow you to do that. Next, let's talk about the folding. As we'd mentioned in the look section, this bike only folds in one spot and that's gonna be the telescoping stem up here in the front. When you're folding it up, the only dimensions you're really taking away are gonna be the height here. So once you do have it in its fully folded position, you're gonna get it down to a package that's about 45 inches by 25 inches by 12 inches. Next, let's talk about the suspension. The D3F doesn't have any traditional suspension, no suspension front forks, no suspension in the rear, but the other parts of suspension we do like to talk about are going to be the tires. So the tires we have here are these 14 inch by 2.125 inch CST tires. Now these tires don't have any puncture protection, sidewall reflective stripes, 
None of those bells and whistles that we like to see on tires. And they've got regular straighter valves, and normally we just leave it at that. However, these straighter valves, the one in the rear is interesting, so it's actually a 45 degree angled out because you know, if you didn't have that, it would be almost impossible to get an air pump in there because the motor's there. So nice attention to detail, I think, on that one. The front one, you do have a little bit more room there, and so it's just going to be a regular straighter valve up front. The other part of suspension we like to talk about is the butt suspension. So the saddle we have here is going to be this medium-sized comfort saddle. There's no branding on here. I found that it was fairly comfortable for me riding around, so I don't really have any complaints about it. It seemed like it's the seat that I would expect to find on this bike. Next, let's talk about the controls. The controls here are super simple. We have got an on off button over here on the left hand side. It also comes with a little cap that just clips on right here at the top to keep you from turning it on and off. The only readout we have here is gonna be the battery level. So over on the right hand side, we have got the button to turn on the lights, turn off the lights. Right above that is gonna be the readout and it's gonna tell us how much battery we've got left. The throttle we have here is over on the right hand side and I don't have any complaints about it. It worked, it seemed to fit this bike, again, at that budget and sort of what this bike's supposed to be used for. Next, let's talk about who this bike might be for. When it comes to deciding if a bike is for you, there's a couple of factors. And the first one's probably gonna be, does it fit you? And the two main measurements that I look at are gonna be the standover height and the reach. The standover height here is 21.5 inches. Now that is not as low as a genuine design step-through bike, but it is fairly easy to get your legs over this one and honestly because it's so small it is easy to just come at it from behind if you had you know mobility issues and you necessarily couldn't get your leg that high so you do have a couple more options where when we get to those bigger bikes straddling those tires or coming back over a rear rack just don't really make sense the other measurement we talked about is the reach and the reach here is 13 inches probably anybody could get that now when we're talking about the rider heights are something we normally look at and for me it's more of an ancillary factor it's like you know it doesn't really matter how tall you are if you can't step over the bike right so i would look at those two first and then after that i would think here you could probably get somebody anywhere from five foot flat to maybe six foot ish on this bike now i'm 510 and to me it feels like a small bike but in reality it is a small bike and when I've got it put in a comfortable pedaling position for me, I still feel like I've got a little bit more room to raise the saddle up if I wanted to. And while we're talking about the lengths of certain things, let's also talk about the rest of the geometry measurements here. You can also look for those down in the description. So we've got a 29 inch maximum saddle height, an 18.75 inch width here at the handlebars, 32.5 inch wheelbase and a 45 inch length overall. The next thing we would look at would be the use case. Now this bike, because it doesn't have that secondary folding mechanism somewhere in the middle of the frame, it's not something I would say is designed for a very compact space. So if I'm thinking about this like a, like a boat or an RV sort of bike, I don't know if this is the direction I would go, just because if it were me, I would look at something that had, you know, a couple more folding options. So this is a bike probably gonna be in the garage. You know, if you've got a truck or a bigger SUV, obviously that would fit in there pretty well. It would probably fit pretty well into the back of some of the larger sedans maybe. But again, you still have to contend with that 45 inch length because it doesn't fold up any more than that. And once you got it out and you're using it, this is probably something I would say strictly stays on the concrete. We've got these smaller tires, no suspension, and the motor only being 250 watts, you'd want to give this bike every advantage. And so being on some fast rolling concrete, whether that's bike trails, streets, concrete sidewalks, things like that, those are the sort of places that I would imagine riding this bike. So we've talked about the specifications on this bike, and now it is time for us to take it out into the real world. It's a rainy day here in Houston, Texas, go figure. And we're gonna go out and ride this bike around and see how she handles. So we are out here on the DYU bike, and as we alluded to in the review, this is a very simple budget-friendly sort of setup. Not a whole lot of readouts going on here. We do have that power button on this side now here's that little cap that I had mentioned just clicks on here like so a nice little cap there so you can't accidentally turn it on they go ahead and turn it on so now over here on the right hand side we can see that we've got three out of four bars not a whole lot of information here as far as how much battery we actually have left but you know it is gonna tell us we're about three quarters full this is the twist throttle on this side and then this is how you turn on the lights and test that you hold it down. Kaboom, you see them come on. Now the lights, honestly, are fairly bright. As far as the angle goes, some of the things you run into when you have a fixed 
integrated light system is that the angle's not great. The angles on this one's not too bad. It's probably right about where I'd want it to be riding around if I was riding around at night. And brightness level wise, you know, it's not incredible, but it is something where if you had some secondary light sources somewhere, you would be able to probably see pretty well. And definitely from the safety perspective, definitely people would be able to see you with that as well. Let's turn it off and let's see what that gearing works like as a bike. Now, as I mentioned, not horrible. This sort of cadence right here, probably going five, six, maybe seven miles per hour. Not that bad. Nice little cadence, good gearing for that. If we wanted to go up a hill or if we were trying to go any faster than that, I don't think it would work out super well. But if you're just kind of towing around, doing some sightseeing, this is pretty decent as far as your gearing goes. And then if we're going like that, we can, of course, hit on those brakes. Now, the mechanical brakes here, they do stop really well. We'll get to some higher speeds and we'll test those out a little bit further down the trail. But let's go ahead and turn it on. It's electric bike. Let's get it electrified. And let's start out doing some throttle only. Go ahead and pull down that throttle. Nice, easy start with the throttle here. It just kind of slowly ramps up to that top speed of 15 miles per hour. Now, there's no display here so I'm not getting that immediate feedback if we're actually reaching that 15 miles per hour but based on my experience which is vast on e-bikes going 15 miles per hour I would say that we're, we're pretty close to that and over here we're you know fairly flat just towing along and a nice smooth ramp up up to that uh, up to that top speed breaking any speed records here again if this is something where you're just kind of cruising around coasting doing a little doing a little swerving See, that's kind of fun kind of a fun little uh, little business there so let's go ahead and test out those brakes again the brakes compared to some of the other stuff on the e-bike i think that the brakes probably one of the best parts about the bike which is important, right? Even if you are going, you know, 15 miles per hour, you still want to be able to stop really quick. And these brakes, uh, these brakes do it. They function really well. So let's go ahead and do some pedaling. Again, we've got those small Welgo folding pedals. Now there's no gears, there's no modes here, so you're just going to start pedaling, and you'll slowly start to get that power. And we're just going to get that nice, easy ramp up to uh, top speed, 15 miles per hour. Now this is about the cadence you'd want to pedal going 15 miles per hour. If you can see my my legs, so not terribly fast, but a little brisk. Howdy! You guys are over there on a mountain bike. I'm over here on this city bike, like the the country mouse and the city mouse. You know, well, we can still be friends. Do some maneuvering there. Now, even though we are a little bit higher than the center of gravity and the steering fork is pretty straight, you know, some of the things you'll get with that is you'll get sort of like every little turn is quite a bit of, of movement. But as long as you are, you know, staying balanced and you're not tweaking out and trying to shove this thing around, really not too big of a deal. You've got to know your limitations with the bike. So again, we're going up to that 15 miles per hour. Just cruising. Let's go ahead and hit on those brakes one more time. Yeah, just comes to a stop super quickly. Um, honestly, guys, as far as this bike goes, it really is one of those things that, you know, you get what you pay for. And I mean that both in the way that I'm not going to compare this to a $1,200 e-bike and... At the same time, it's a fair price, I think, for what you what you get here. Now, the use case, that's something you'll have to consider. Like, is this something that I would use? Does it fit uh, Does it fit what I need it to do? Well, that's the case, you know, 500 bucks for this little bike can go, you know, scooting around on. Not a huge deal. Now, if you are in the market for an e-bike and you're just kind of shopping around looking for stuff, you can probably find some stuff used in your local area, Facebook Marketplace, things like that 
that uh, you know probably around that price range where you're going to be able to get you know a thousand dollar, twelve hundred dollar bike for that. Maybe it's a year old, it's got some you know some wear and tear, but you throw on some new tires and you know make sure there's nothing else wrong with the bike, then you know that would be a pretty good deal as well. Look at this little hill. This is probably the biggest hill we could take on this bike. So let's go ahead and put that to the test. Not interested in getting too wet today, guys. So on the website, I believe it says that it can climb grades that are about 15 degrees, according to one of the pictures that I saw there. So let's go ahead and climb up this little hill right here. I don't want to call it a hill. It's an incline. Yeah, let's just see if you're going slow on a regular bike. You drop it down in gear here. Yeah, I seem to handle that. All right, now we're going to hit the steeper side of the hill. Let's see how it goes. So I try not to put too much there at the end. Definitely was slowing down quite a bit. I don't know if I could have done that much longer, but for that little pop up that incline, you know, handle it. Didn't stop. Definitely straining a little bit there. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for our review of the D3F from DYU. If you wanna know more about this bike or you wanna purchase one yourself, I will have a link to their website down below. And if you got any questions for me, please let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.